all right guys welcome back to the another video in this video i'm going to talk about cross validation so before jumping into the cross validation section i want to summarize the previous uh, work so i have one data set from uh, air quality index from shanghai so it will look like this so based on several parameter like maximum temperature minimum temperature and precipitation pressure we are going to calculate the air quality index which has value ranges from i think uh, 100 to 400 somewhere between that and then um, we previously we did the regression uh, regression multi-dimensional linear regression and then we get the accuracy of uh, 27 percent and if you so if you want to see the uh, total process please uh, check the notebook also you can check my previous video and uh, here the purpose of cross validation is to test the ability of machine learning model to predict the new data set it's uh, also used to give the insight on how model generate generalized to an independent data set what i mean is like whenever we change the random state uh, whenever we try to split our data set into different uh, in a different way then uh, our accuracy will also change so let me change it to 40 then our accuracy is now um, changed to 26.5 and then if i change it to 5 so it's now getting worse uh, 23.1 but uh, this is just the uh, number for shuffling our train and test data set what this cross validation will do is it will analyze the test data set and then uh, it will uh, give us the insight how our model will general generalize to the uh, independent data set okay so to do cross validation you need to import the cross validation score and k fold from escalon.model selection and after that uh, you need to pass the uh, these attributes into k fold uh, function so uh, here the n splits uh, mean uh, we are going to uh, test the five random splits uh, you can say that you can uh, you can say that it's like five different way of shuffling our data set and then we said shuffle equal to true and then random state to 42 so that it will shuffle uh, all the five different data set uh, into this same way and then uh, as previous i am going to use the linear regression and then if i try to cross validate this model then my accuracy will be uh, like ranges from 0 0.2700 and then uh, it's 0 0.2333 and then 0 0.2583 that means my accuracy is ranging from 0 0.2333 to 0 point i think this one 2769 and then from this uh, these accuracies uh, i can say that my mean accuracy is 0 0.2629 uh, and uh, also my standard deviation for this data set is 0 0.0162 and then if i try to calculate the 95 percentile confidence interval then uh, i can use the np dot quantile function and then i have to pass the results and then uh, 2.5 percent uh, of my first interval and then 0 0.975 from uh, the end and after that uh, i can say that my 95 percent conf confidence interval for my data set i mean the accuracy will be ranges from 23.58 percent to 27.68 percent so that's how you uh, cross validate the model so let me run this as well and then this okay so after that i want to talk a little bit about regularization as well 
so basically this regularization is useful for uh, avoiding the overfitting so basically there are two type of regularization in escalon so one is ridge and another one is lasso so before diving into these types so let me explain uh, the uh, few other things so let's say you have the regression equation y equal to b0 b1x b2x dot dot bp xp and then uh, your loss function will be uh, loss function also known as residual sum of square rss will be like yi minus and then you need to minus these things i think instead of p i need to write j so yeah uh, yeah i think p yeah j is equal to i to p and uh, you are simply uh, like exchanging the uh, exchanging the value from right right to left so yi minus b0 minus summation of bj x ij uh, square this is my residual uh, sum of square and then uh, in regression what we i will do is we we have to add this additional parameter in both side of above equation that means lambda summation j equal to i to p uh, b square j and then we added the same parameter in the uh, right side as well that means uh, it will help us to tilt the regression line a little bit and uh, similarly in lasso regression also we, we can uh, simply add the lambda and then uh, absolute bj not the square so both are like same same and lasso regression also can be used for like feature selection it shrinks the coefficient of less important feature to zero the lasso regression function also can be used for like feature selection so yeah so let me show you the res regression first so it's like similar to linear regression what we did before we we can simply use the res regression uh, is in similar manner so from escalon dot linear model we are going to use the uh, import the res and then for now actually uh, you can define this value of this lambda or uh, here it's denoted by alpha uh, to certain a uh, value like ranging from uh, some 0.1 to finite number or 0 to finite number and uh, here uh, I try to like see the uh, see the uh, more important value of the alpha based on uh, this for loop so I have like alpha values ranges from 0.1 to 10,000 so I'm, I'm trying all the alpha value on the ridge uh, equation so basically you can simply uh, replace this ridge by linear regression as well in the linear regression model but there will be no alpha value right so for the ridge equation i added alpha equal to alpha and then ridge dot fit and i'm fitting it on trend data set and then calculating score or r square on test data set and then i'm appending the score so based on this scores you can see that our uh, our r square value is increased up to i think up to this point that means uh, 100 alpha value of 100 but after that it getting worse that means uh, based on alpha value our accuracy is uh, gradually increasing and then after certain interval it it's getting decreasing so similar in a similar way you can do the lasso regression as well so to do so simply replace the res by lasso so it's the same thing and after that uh, let me talk a little bit about feature selection using lasso so to do so first of all i have to list out all the available features so for me uh, the features will be name of column df dot uh, i'm dropping all the column as i am uh, i mean i am 
taking all the column except these three columns aqi aqi explain and z so if you see the uh, all the column names so here are all the column names uh, this is independent uh, independent feature so i remove it and then aqi and aqi explained these are our target level so i remove these three things and all the other are my input features okay so after that uh, i simply insert the lasso regression module uh, using alpha value of 0 0.3 and then uh, i feed the module and then i try to calculate the coefficient of lasso and then after that if i try to print the coefficient or the column name so you can see this coefficient belongs to this index that means uh, the first col first value is belongs to maximum temperature c and then the similar in a similar way last value belongs to this uh, wind speed cam per hour so if i try to plot these columns and lasso coefficient uh, then my graph will look like this so from this graph if the value is higher uh, in any direction let's say in positive or negative direction then uh, you can uh, get this feature has more important uh, things uh, so it will it will uh, of course affect our uh, final regression equation so from this figure we can see that i don't know for this air quality index uh, the most important feature is wind speed cam per hour uh, it's showing like that and then also maximum temperature c and then uh, sun hour i think uh, are almost similar uh, important features and yeah but this all this all three are the negative uh, correlation with aqi but these three values have positive uh, correlation with uh, air quality index so that's how you select the features but it's not the uh, like uh, very excellent way to select the feature so but uh, uh, it's only give you the idea about how dependent are your uh, features on your target level so yeah that's all about like feature selection and cross validation and then also about uh, regularization i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you in the next